I was definitely into nature for as long as I can remember. Every recess, I would go to the like the three bushes on the playground and catch grasshoppers and put them in my pocket. And then one day they all jumped out of my pants during class. And I had a note to my mom that I was not to bring grasshoppers in my pocket to class. <laughs> I had a college professor, very cool professor named Joe Trumpy, who would take his art students on backpacking trips. And I remember there was this whole thing, like we were trying to find this bird and we, we kept missing it. And then finally there it was. He showed me a painted bunting in the spotting scope. Uh, last year I did a, a big year in Cook County and there were certain birds like red-throated loon, which you're not likely to see without a spotting scope. That's kind of what got me into it. Uh, just Yeah, about lake watching in general, it's a very different way of birding than, than you normally think of, that most birders even don't do this as much. Today it looks like most things are flying south, which is makes sense for the season. It doesn't always work that way. And, uh, there's all sorts of things to look at, but in general, it's like the shape. So like how big their head is, how thick their neck is, if their belly is deep or thin, and then wing shape, uh, if, it, if it looks like a wide faced wing or a long thin wing. One good trick is if you can count the wing beats. You know, some of them, they beat so fast, it's like, what -da 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 -da. you can't do it. Mallards, you can basically count their wing beats. That's how you can tell it's either a mallard or a pintail. One o'clock going to the right. Just past, Just the, past buoy. the buoy. I got him. Very the, nice. The head, it's a big one and it's flapping slowly, but it has small feet and it's head bucking like crazy. It has an even head and neck. And you're just standing in one place, scanning the sky or the water. And it's a lot more, you know, you get just a temporary look at the bird. It's not sitting up in a tree. You don't hear it generally. With water birds, it's really fast a lot of times, and so it's really exciting. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I see a bird flying. It's you're gonna have five seconds with it. What do you pay attention to? I have three birds flying, moving south. And another thing to learn is like, don't dwell on them too long. If they they look like they're not gonna get closer, because something closer might uh, be flying by. Yeah, they're, they're behind the Harrier, so at. 10.30, there is a, a flock of 11 birds. We're at about 10 o'clock, a field above the horizon. I guess there's mallards and then some smaller dabbler. What we're keeping track of are the, the different species we see and then the number of each species. And it all goes to this website that's this huge uh, body of data now that's eBird. People are sharing their sightings more. There's more people birding and we're all on our phones like, Cave swallow, barn swallow, and Montrose, you know, so you can rush down there with your car, you know, if you have enough free time. <laughs> yeah. That is nice. Very cool. Good call, Owen. That's a late Oscar, huh? That's migrating Oscar. Every time you're looking at something and you're like, I don't know what that is, if you don't have feedback to tell you it is this thing and not this thing, you're not gonna learn. Find places where people that are better than you are doing it, because that's really where you're going to learn the most, is standing next to somebody who's been doing it for decades and having them show you in real time what to pay attention to. That's probably one of the cooler things about it. It's like, how many activities in our, our life do you really need to be somewhere with another person in real life, you know, not watching a YouTube video to learn it, you know? All learning is going to YouTube. I mean, I even put videos of flying birds on YouTube, uh, but they're they're only so good so far, you know. I'm working with Audubon to, on a program that uh, collects donated spotting scopes with the idea of giving them away to applicants who want, who want a spotting scope, maybe can't afford it, because these things are expensive as hell. It's a, a cost-restrictive activity, you know, and that sucks because it's great. Does the nature inspire the music? Not in any obvious or direct way. I'm trying to make things that I initially think are bad, whatever that is. I'm like trying to start there. 
you know, and I think that's a lot of times how you can arrive at uh, something new or interesting is if you start and it's like, I don't like this. Can I make this something that I do like? That's kind of fun to me. If I don't feel a risk being taken, I am not interested generally. One of the huge reasons I'm out bird watching so much is because you learn so much. I learn so much. Every time I go out, I learn something and you get better and better and better. And I love that. When you first start doing it and you stand next to somebody who's been doing it for decades, it's like a magic trick. You know, that has, it has in common with music, right? You're like, how is it possible that somebody can do this? It's kind of like this thing that was around you your whole life was, was hidden in plain sight. It's addictive, it changes how you see things. I love that.